Hello, let's tell you all over the world. What do you think about the new Lazio shirt? I think it's amazing. Probably one of the best in the last couple of years or so. I think Mitsuno did a great job. Right, Alistair? Do you agree with me? You were there at Piazza del Popolo, right? So you can yeah, see. Yeah, I, was... <laughs> I, I was there, but I'm getting a better view of the shirt right now, looking at you through a video than I did on at Piazza del Popolo, I would say. But yeah, I mean, you're a natural model as well. So I think that obviously okay. whatever you're wearing is going to look good, Vittorio. Um, but no, I love it. I think the home shirt especially has gone down pretty much universally well. I think almost everyone seems to like it. The yeah, away shirt, obviously, a bit a bit more jazzy, a bit more out there. Uh, but my favorite part of the night was probably the, well, that one. they started with the, the goalkeepers and there was a bit of a buzz around the piazza where everyone's like, oh, is, you know, are they going to somehow be bringing out like a new keeper surprising <laughs> right here? And I was like, welcome to the stage, Marius Adamonis. And there he was because there's no one else left. So it's probably the biggest kind of contribution Adamonis has made to Lazio um, in years was was modeling the, the new goalkeeper shirt, sadly. <laughs> well, Pepe Reina last year said that he's improved a lot. He's going to be a surprise. So maybe we don't know. He's the next Lazio goalkeeper. Uh, so. talk, talking about the other shirt, I, I have to say my daughter loved them. I had to buy the black one to them. So... Maybe for the kids, they prefer the 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 way shirt. But yeah, this is—I mean, the the eagle all over—it's it's amazing. And I have to say, I saw even the training top. That's that's very nice again. I think Mitsuno did an unbelievable job. Uh, I think a lot of people were concerned about Mitsuno, as I don't think, I don't know Cittadella probably has has Mitsuno had Mitsuno last year, and the shirt wasn't great, but. I mean, the job they did with Lazio was amazing. Uh, and, uh, sorry, and also the event. I mean, when I mean the, whole, the last four years I've been in Rome, there's never been anything like that. There was there was an event when they opened the new shop in the city center, but it wasn't nearly the same scale as that. It was it was a great night. You know, it was like two hours. Piazza was packed with fans. They had all sorts of. It was a little bit like a UEFA group stage draw. Like it took about an hour before they actually, you know, yeah. gave you what you were there to see. Um, but it was great to have an event like that for Lazio fans, dedicated to Lazio fans in the centre of Rome. It's a bit of a novelty, to be honest. Um, that's organised by the club and not by the fans themselves, that is, because obviously there are the part birthday parties and stuff like that, but that's all fan organised. Okay. The bad thing is it wasn't streamed on uh, social media and Lazio has a, a TV channel and it wasn't live on the TV channel. I mean, you organize an event and you don't broadcast it live. How bad is that? I mean, I, I, I couldn't believe it. it on, on Lazio channel, on Lazio style channel, they were broadcasting Juventus Lazio, the match, uh, the last match of the season when, when we equalized at the last minute, was it that? And instead of broadcasting the live event of the new Lazio shirt, I mean that, that's embarrassing. Baby steps, Vittorio. <laughs> baby, baby steps towards being a serious club. <laughs> but but, uh, but Alistair, probably the most important event of that day was what happened afterwards. The presentation, right? The the discussion between Lotita and Tare. I know you were there and you participate to that. So do you want to tell us what happened? I was I was holding them apart like this, <laughs> throwing punches. Uh, no, I mean, obviously, the 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 front. So they they basically kind of fenced off the front. You know, there was the stage, and then there was the seated area, which is where all the players were sitting, and their kind of uh, families and Lotito and and uh, Tari were there as well. And you know, being there obviously live, it's very difficult to get a sense of any of this kind of stuff that's going on. So everyone was kind of refreshing their phones to, <laughs> to hear about what was actually uh, happening. But yeah, there is supposedly a very heated discussion between Lotito and Tare um, at, at this event, uh, which seems kind of crazy. But, you know, let's not forget, when was it? A couple of years ago when there was somebody took that recording of Lotito screaming at Inzaghi down his phone um, and shouting at him. 
So I think, in my mind, it's not that unusual for heated discussions to happen around Lotito. Um, but yeah, then Lazio quickly um, pounced by bringing out a, a official club statement to deny that there's any issues going on between the two of them which is funny, we were just laughing about this before coming on because they, they haven't issued a statement about, you know, Stefan Radu's contract extension or or even kind of new signings, it takes a while, but they will immediately pounce when there's a newspaper article they don't like. So, yeah, and, and, much ado about nothing, really. And the funniest thing about that was all the press release was about this discussion and the last line was, oh, by the way, we announced that... Uh, Fabiani is the new responsible of uh, Primavera and uh, our women's section. I mean, that's that's embarrassing. That's simply Lazio-style press release, right? Well, yeah, exactly. Um, I'm, I'm hoping, yeah, we'll we'll get some sort of press release like gently nudging us now towards transfer market. I think we'll we'll uh, hopefully get press releases soon about Gila, about Casale, because they are. They're both here, Vittorio. Um, well, um, it's been a hell of a week, hasn't it? I mean, do you want to start? I know you've got you've got an update for us on another story. Yeah, well, Alessio Romagnoli is the main story at the moment uh, because, I mean, how long is it? It's one month or more that Lazio and Romagnoli are talking. And this morning, Radio Sei, that it's a very popular radio station here in Rome, said that it's done. They found the deal, uh, Romagnoli signed the contract, blah, 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 things like that. So I contacted my friend Gianluigi Longari, that is the transfer market expert of uh, Sport Italia, a uh, Sport Italian TV channel, and he told me that, no, it's not done. Basically, Lazio increased the offer this last night, and Romagnoli said, well, I will think about it. Maybe he's going to reply today, maybe Saturday, maybe Monday, we don't know. But yes, Lazio made a further step forward, and we hope this is going to be... Uh, the final one, the one that will convince Alessio Romagnoli. But there's even one thing to say, Alessio, is that the longer st it stays, the more complicated it gets. Because Romagnoli has an offer, 4 million euros, which is much higher than the offer Lazio's made from Fulham. And, you know, Sarri need his central defender as soon as possible to get used to Sarri movement that are different compared to the Pioli one. So the longer it takes, the more complicated it gets for Lazio. Uh, as you were mentioning, Casale is done. Gila, we have a mystery because he started the medicals and then they were interrupted. It looks like he got COVID, by the way. So he won't be able to reach Aronso very soon. Marcos Antonio is another player that we signed, but didn't reach Aronso because he had he need to um, feel some things because he's not in the U. So he needs to get paperwork to be able to sign the contract for a new EU team. So yeah, a lot of things to do. And let's hope that Romagnoli decides as soon as possible. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it's 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 good to it's good on the one hand to hear that Lazio are actually willing to increase that offer finally, because I think that's something that's been a little bit frustrating from from reading the reports so far is that it seems like an obvious thing for them to do, an obvious compromise to make, so that's good. But obviously frustrating if it's not quite as close as we're constantly being told it is. I mean, it seems like every day uh, there's a new story saying that Romagnoli is is done and he's, and he's a Lazio player, so clearly still isn't. That said, Vittorio, three centre-backs, if, if, if they can get that one over the line... Um, is a great, great get, but I would say if, because in my mind, Gila and Casale, it, it's not actually enough for me. <laughs> I know that might sound quite demanding, but because uh, I did say at the start of the transfer market, I wanted two centre-backs and they are two centre-backs, but I think you do need one like Romagnoli who you feel comfortable coming in to be your starting centre-back in a way that neither of those guys quite are. I think Casale will be a starting centre-back, but it's not a certainty. You know, he's he's a promising young player. Uh, he had a decent season at Verona, but we are talking about different things when it's a player like Romagnoli, the experience he's got compared to a guy like Casale in terms of the certainty you're going to get from these players. 
I think I think Gila is going to be a bench player. Is going to get depth to that position. But I would be very surprised if he starts, especially in the first two three months. I need him time to adapt to Italian football. That is completely different to the Spanish one. Let's not forget that he plays something like twenty five minutes in La Liga. So it's not that you are getting an experienced player. He's very young. Uh, Real Madrid, uh, especially Raúl, was. Uh, highly regarded, uh, the player had talent, so we're going to see. But, I mean, Casale will fight with Patrick for the starting job, I think, while Romagnoli should be the starter. So, yes, we got two players, but, you know, we need other level player. And we don't have a goalkeeper, which I think is the important role, right? Starting with other goalkeeper, um, it's, it's not ideal. No, um, especially now that we're into, what, day three in Auronso. So, yeah, preseason's properly underway now. Uh, I think it has been good, the fact that Lazio have been able to get in four players as it stands so early, but uh, none of them are actually in Auronso. Actually, Cancellieri is, isn't he? But, yes. <laughs> yes, but yes, you know, it's it's still kind of... I was looking at the kind of training updates today and they were talking about how Sari is working with the defense and there's hardly anyone there to work with at the moment. So I'm not sure why he's choosing this this early point to be focusing so much on that if we don't have three of our center backs or any of our goalkeepers actually um, present yet. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But if that is the four, uh, Romagnoli, Casale, Gila and Patrick, are you happy with that? I mean, presumably, you know, this is assuming that uh, uh, that Acerbi would would then be on the way out if if three new guys come in. Why you forgot about Kamenovic? Kamenovic, yeah, Radu as well, but I I would see them probably behind the other four in the the pecking order as it is. I think Rado will move as left back because I don't think we're going to sign other players. And Kamenovic has a huge chance because he's pretty much the only central defender available now. So, you know, I think he's going to have a chance to to prove everything he has, especially in the first friendly matches. Because, I mean, Gila, I don't know when he's going to be available. Casale, he's doing the medicals today, so I think tomorrow will be there. So, I, I mean... Uh, there are some Primavera at the Agpo that could play there, etc. But I think Kamenovic has a huge, huge chance to impress Sarri in the first couple of weeks of, uh, of Oronzo. So that's going to be an interesting point. Um, but yeah, I mean, we signed Marcos Antonio. He's not there. Uh, Casale will get there. Gila should have been there. We're not very lucky, like right, Alasar. We have Cancellieri, who seemed very promising, though. He has been... Uh, uh, on the verge in these first training days in Oronzo. Yeah, and I guess the other thing as well is that uh, Patrick has has signed a new deal um, for five years. <laughs> now, that took me by surprise. It didn't take me by surprise at all that they're, they're giving him a new contract. I'm glad they have for reasons of mentioned many times before but five years did you see that coming do you think this is just to protect the possibility of losing someone on a free or do they is, is this sari saying this is my man and look at the improvements he's made or so five I, years is is a lot i think that iglitare has just a copy of contracts and in that copy there is five years because Every player we sign, even Murishi, we sign him five years of contract. Vavro, five years of contract. Every player we sign. I think Tare should get another copy of contract where it's two years, three years, something like that. No, all five years. I mean, we don't have alternative. That's that's the copy we have. And he just has to put the name of the player, the date of birth, etc. And it's done. But yeah, I mean... I, he's still young, so you could understand five years makes sense. But, yeah, <laughs> three years, I would be happy. Instead, five, it's a little bit too much. Because then, go and, what happened with the, with the Sherpi? We extended his contract for 
five years again. And he's going to be 37 when it's going to expire. And I mean, it's complicated now to get rid of that player, right? He has a huge salary, especially for Lazio style, um, a long contract. So, you know, it, rumors are he had some discussion with Sari last year. So we, we have to get rid, rid of him. And it's not going to be easy with that type of contract. Yeah, and you would have thought they might have learned by now. I mean, it was... Um, look, I am happy... Just had a comment here from AP saying Patrick was great last season, and he was. And I'm, and we've said already he was the best defender last season, which is kind of um, amazing. But So I am glad he's staying. It's, it's more that if, if all these other centre-backs are coming in, Patrick's place in the hierarchy is going to drop. He's not going to be a, an automatic first-choice starter next season if we've got all these new guys, you would assume. So it, what we don't want to end up in is a situation in the future, which Lazio constantly end up in, where we have all these players that basically aren't being used, but, but we're not able to find new clubs to sign them. And I hope that doesn't happen with Patrick. I hope this... Uh, improvement continues. I hope he continues to be as useful as he was last season. Um, but I think that's the one risk, isn't it, with the five-year deal, is that you don't know what things are going to look like in two or three years. So what, what's the... Uh, like, three years is still quite a long time. I think that's a reasonable kind of contract length to yeah. go for. But, I mean, if you look at the kind of players who have left this this summer, for example, Jordan Lukaku has taken this long. Uh, it's been clear for a long time that Jordan Lukaku isn't a Lazio player. And it's taken this long for him to actually leave the club and end his contract uh, because of the length of deal he was on. So, yeah, um, I'm ha I am happy Patrick Sting. Don't get me wrong. Um, but, yeah, I was surprised it was quite that long. Should we talk goalkeepers, though? We had a comment there about uh, Mix Maximiano, who's like well, a completely new name who suddenly emerged after our conversations last time. Well, we talk about Adamonis. He's the goalkeeper, right? Adamonis. <laughs> Alia Furlaneto, that's the trio we have at the moment. Um, well, yes, it looks like Atalanta hates us. And even though Carnezecchi wanted to go to Lazio, they didn't lower the, the request, which is 20 million euros, which I think, honestly, it's a little bit too high for a goalkeeper who never played in Serie A. Massive talent, but anything can happen. He's injured, so he's probably out till January. So I thought that was too expensive. And Lazio decided to turn and look for other option. It looks like in the weekend, Vicario was done. And then suddenly they moved to Maximiano, who is the goalkeeper of Granada, who got relegated because Mallorca of Murici was saved uh, while Granada got relegated. Um, I don't know him very well. He looks like a decent goalkeeper. But I don't know. He's young. He's 23. But he, he didn't play in the under-21 Port the Portuguese under 21, he was on the bench. He hasn't been called in the national team where Rui, Pat Rui Patricio starts. So we don't, we have to admit that he's not the sub of, I don't know, Donnarumma or Neuer. So that concerned me a little bit. Yeah, in my mind, and maybe it's just the unfamiliarity with the player, but in my mind, it, it felt like a bit of a step down from the excitement that we felt at the likes of Karnazeki or, or uh, Vicario. And, but that is probably because we've not watched him play. I mean, you know, he, he has, he, uh, from, you know, the, just the most basic of research and like looking at his Wikipedia and transfer market pages and things, does seem like he's essentially had one, one season in La Liga and kind of half a season playing for Sporting as his kind of experience as being a first choice keeper. So, yeah, 23 years old. He is clearly very talented and highly rated because he's played with Portugal through all the youth levels, I think from kind of under 15s upwards. Um, and, you know, these aren't small clubs he's been playing with. It's been a very good uh, good level he's been playing at. But, yeah, it's, it seems like a bit, bit more of an unknown and, in my mind, a little bit more of a gamble than it was for Vicario or for uh, Karnazeki just because we we understood and we kind of knew where we're coming from and their place in Italian football and their readiness for, for becoming a first choice goalkeeper in a Serie A team. Um, and also we should, should mention I see how unlucky we were in our last podcast that we were just talking about Pepe Reina's Lazio future. And then I think 
what five ten minutes after we finished recording they announced he was off so there you go probably he listened to us and said no guys i cannot do it and, and left um answering to ap i think one of the reasons why we are trying to sign maximiano is he's good with his ball on his feet he's quite good like a lot of portuguese goalkeeper in playing with his ball with a ball so i think that's one of the option why he has been preferred to vicario and i think lazio is convinced it's going to cost less than getting vicario because empoli is asking 50 million euros which it's it's a lot of money especially for lazio so i think uh, Tad is convinced that he can get maximiano for less than 10 min so we're going to see what happens um but Alizer, we have to talk about Bavaro and Murici because that's good business, right? We were able finally to get rid of two expensive players, two players that didn't work out absolutely with Lazio. And, uh, you know, it was tough to get rid of them, but we finally did it. So that, that's good. Yeah, I mean, you know, looking back at Vavro's Lazio career, comes in as, I think, the most expensive defender in club history after Mihailovic and Stam. Uh, barely plays, goes on loan, says he hates Lazio in a video and leaves. <laughs> so I don't think there will be many people you crying. What did I forget? He apologized afterwards, saying that he's stupid. Lazio is a too big club for me, he said. Which makes yeah, where's, sense. where's the fun in showing both sides of the argument? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I, I think it didn't work out for him for a lot of reasons. I, I, I still don't. I'm still not convinced he's he's a terrible player. I just think it was wrong place at the wrong time. He didn't he didn't really fit in with what Lazio were trying to do with the coaches he was playing for, and he lost confidence after a while as well, which is fair enough. So, yeah, I think him him going is good it had to happen we were starting to get worried that he would end up being frozen out or something like that and so that's that's great marici vittorio i don't want to tempt fate by talking about that too much but he is in he is in belgium isn't he yes he's there he's there so i mean crossing fingers this time will uh, will happen uh, can i say something about purishi uh it didn't work out but as a as a man he he, he earns my respect he said, you know, he's going there. He said, uh, Lazio has, I have three years of contract with Lazio. Lazio has a more power than me. And if they send me there, then I'll go. He never said something wrong about the club and the team and the player. So, um, again, he did pretty well at Mallorca. I thought he would have stayed there. Uh, and I think in the right club, he will shine. So I think in uh, Club Rouge, he will, um, if he signs, obviously, I think he will have success there and i hope for him because he's a nice nice bloke yeah definitely um although i did find it a little bit funny his kind of goodbye message to mallorca which was very nice but he said something like my heart will always be red and white or whatever their colors are and i was like you've been there alone for six months so you can't start saying your heart are the colors of the shirt um it's a bit too much but, well, yeah. they adore him, right? Every yeah. time, you know, uh, I, I, I was impressed. The social media account of Mallorca was tweeting every single day about Murici. The fan loved him. So that's why I was surprised that's, that they didn't kick him. But it was the same in Fenerbahce, right? I mean, he, was, he has been massively popular at the rest of his clubs, apart from Lazio. And actually, <laughs> the... I, I, but he's, but he's not un, like you're saying. He's not unpopular at Lazio as a person or as a character. He's he was just not good enough. That, that's all it came down to. And like Vavro, not necessarily not good enough uh, as a footballer, but certainly not good enough as the kind of player that Lazio need. And and that that all comes back to Tari and the mistakes he's made because that should have been identified. That was kind of clear before. Vici Mobile shouldn't be a huge target man because we don't. We don't play a style of football where they're throwing crosses into the box all the time, which is when, to be fair, Marici looked great was a couple of times when he was able to challenge for aerial balls and hold the ball up and so on. Um, and likewise, Vavro, that's not, we don't need this big, brawny, muscular, tall centre-back because Inzaghi wasn't able to really use him in a back three. 
And then by the time Sadi arrived, his confidence was gone because whenever he tried to use him on the right side of that back three, it didn't work. And he was too slow and it, it, not great enough with his feet or whatever. So, yeah, I, th I don't think it's these players' fault that it's not happened. I think it's actually Tare's fault and Lazio's fault for choosing them in the first place when they were kind of, you know, square pegs and round holes kind of thing. The funny thing about Vavro is that the last match he started for Lazio, I thought he was his best. You remember Genoa Lazio, yeah. he played because a Acerbi got injured in the warming up. And I thought it was his best performance. And I thought, wow, this could be the, the turning point. Instead, he never played again. Uh, that was simply yeah. Yeah, incredible. So, yeah. But, but Alistair, we still have Durmizi, uh, Johnny, Javan Anderson. I mean, we still have plenty of players to get rid of. of. And, uh, yeah, none of these have been called for the Abronso uh, training. King has been called. He's been linked with Bologna and Venezia. I hope we get rid of him as soon as possible. Um, do you think that now that we sold Murici, we're going to sign Avicii Mobile, or do you think Cancellieri is that player? I hope we are, because I don't think Cancellieri is that player. No, he's not a striker. He's a winger. Um, and I've had enough of... <laughs> just endlessly signing wingers and playing them in the wrong positions, which seems to be what we're doing, whether it's with Johnny, who is signed as a winger and then played as a wing back, or then it's, uh, you know, Cabral, who's, who's a winger and is signed to play as a striker. No, just sign a striker. Uh, I know strikers are expensive. I know it's difficult to sell this, this role to any player as well, because you're saying, hey, here's our, one of our legendary best ever strikers, and you're going to be his number two, so you're hardly going to play. It's not an easy sell, but there are definitely options out there. Um, and Chiro, being the age he is, he's not going to last forever. So I think you can sell it to a younger player, perhaps. I think we do need that. Yeah, that, absolutely. And uh, I think it's it's been good that certain, you know the moves are being made and things are happening, but there is definitely still an absence of Avicii Mobile and obviously two goalkeepers and a left back. Uh, so... It feels like a lot has happened, but there's actually still quite a lot that still needs to happen. Well, we said it, right? AP, uh, before I forget, uh, let's your channel do the highlights and uh, show the live session of, uh, of the Aronso training. So I don't know if abroad is able to, you're able to see it, but yeah, that's the only way you can do it. Um, what did I want you to say? Yeah, Alas, we said, right, Lazio needed to sign seven, eight players this summer. So the fact that we signed, what is it, four, it, it's it's a good sign, but the job is not done. Um, the other thing you were mentioning that being the Vichy Mobile means you don't play a lot. I think we said it already last week in the last podcast. This year is going to be completely different, especially from August to September. Lazio is going to play every single time every three days a week. There's the season starting, Campionato, then September, the Europa League starts, there's a, a couple of three, four matches, Serie A matches on Wednesday. So I think Sarri will need to rotate a lot of players. One thing that came out is that Sarri asked two players for position. I would be amazing if that happened, but it looks like Lazio is trying to do that, right? Uh, we have Marcos Antonio and Cataldi for the playmaker position. We have Luis Alberto and uh, Basic, Minico Savic and Akpa Pro. So it looks like Lazio is trying to get two players for every position to rotate. Uh, so I, I think we need Avicii Mobile. And I think Cancellieri is a great signing. Uh, he can play in every position. But I think it's, it's a huge gamble if he's going to be the Vice Mobile. I, I do think he's going to be could be the replacement for Dono Pedro Zaccani, especially if, if Raul Moro is going to go to Verona. But yeah, I do think we need a Vision Mobile. And I think that the Vision Mobile will play a lot this season for this reason, because Chile Mobile cannot play every two days. He, he can, but he might want to. And this is a part of the issue as well. He's the, he's the captain. He always wants to play. And it's that's... That's something Sadi's going to have to manage as well, is that he's going to have to be pretty firm with Chiro to say, no, you're you're resting. Like, you, and we have to use your energy here and use it there. Um, yeah, but he's not in, Sadi's not in Zaghi, right? I think with, with Zaghi, yeah. we have a problem. 
Uh, remember, Achebe was playing everywhere, every match, even if a friendly match. Achebe wants to play, and with, with Inzaghi he was playing. We, has, we saw with Sarri, this didn't happen. So I believe that Sarri is a different type of manager, and uh, this w won't happen. Obviously, it, it depends, uh, right, Alistair? If I have, I don't know, Mertens, okay, then I can choose to uh, don't pick Chile Mobile. But if the other option is Cabral, then I understand why Chile Mobile would play every single match, right? Yeah, yeah, true. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. One, one other thing I wanted to ask you about, because there's been a little bit of talk about Luis Alberto again and Sevilla coming in for him and so on. Um, we actually did a poll last week on Twitter asking people what they would actually accept for Alberto because there was that report about Sevilla wanting to offer 12 million in Oliver Torres as a, uh, you know, a counterweight in that move. And when we did it, 71% of people said they would accept 25 to 30 million for Alberto, which is supposedly uh lotito's asking price for him yeah where, where do you stand on that because that's obviously a reasonable amount of money it's not a crazy amount of money but then i guess it could be invested in an illich uh or an illich plus of each immobile even or depending on you know how much of that is actually chosen to reinvest in the market so how do you feel about this well the thing is if Luis Alberto goes last will sign illich the funny thing is, this, the only season where Lazio is open to sell Luis Alberto, he arrives on time, he shows up at Oronzo the right day, he's all smiling and, and laughing, etc. I mean, I, I don't know what's going on. Last year, he didn't arrive on time, he looked grumpy, etc. This year, where he could go, he's all happy. Oh, he, was, he already knows he's been sold, even though Sevilla doesn't look like he's going to make another offer. Or he simply improved, you know, you get, you mature and he's happy to be at Lazio. I really don't know. But yes, uh, I don't think he's leaving, honestly. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I would be, I was convinced he was leaving. Now I'm not sure. And so I don't think Illich will come. Is that enough then? Because talking about the rotation options, the two options in every position, when you're reading that out to me, I, I don't think... Having Akbak Pro as your backup, Alberto is is really a good enough uh, to be serious, and that's why I think the idea of Illich coming in and keeping Alberto would be incredible. But it's probably asking a bit too much, yeah. And it's quite a big investment on top of all the other investments that need to be made. You know what? the The, the relationship with Verona is so good that I wouldn't be surprised if you know Api was asking sending on loan Floriani and Ron Moro. We could do something like we gave them on loan Floriani Mussolini, who's very good. I think he's going to be a good career, especially if we give him a chance. If we send them Ron Moro and Floriani Mussolini and we get in loan Illich for this year, I think that could be something that could happen. And, uh, you know, maybe we, we do like Zaccagni. We get him on loan and then we buy out him the next year. That could be an option. Let's not forget that we get like 60 million euros, something like that, between Murici and Vavro. So we spent nine for Marcos Antonio, if I'm not wrong. So we should have a little bit of money that we could spend on, on Illich. Uh, so there's that chance. I would be surprised, honestly. I mean, the double loan would be a, a more reasonable uh, deal. And that would make us really competitive, I think. That would be a uh, changing uh, signing for Lazio. But, you know, don't see it happening. I, I wouldn't be that confident, honestly. Mm. <clears throat> right. Anything else? <laughs> well, we need two goalkeepers. Well, are you, are you, I, I'm injured, but are you available? Uh, yeah, I could manage. I've got a pair of gloves sitting next door, so yeah, uh, could give it a go. I am, I am away next week, though, so I might have to come to Aronso afterwards. Not a surprise. You're always on holiday. I mean, <laughs> apparently, yeah. This this is actually a holiday this time, though. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
It's well, you were, you, you were on, apparently on holiday on, on Monday night instead of coming to Piazza del Popolo. So that's well, I, I had this little problem, right? Where is uh, it? That just looks really comfortable. I don't know what you're complaining about. <laughs> I mean, with this weather in Italy, guys, if you're not in Italy, I'm melting. I'm, I'm, I was thinking to go back to England because it's so hot. You, you couldn't believe it. You know, yeah. Alice the Verna Forest close to Rome because it was too hot. I mean, uh, this is this is incredible. I mean, yeah, I've amazingly avoided talking about how hot it is today until now, but let's just finish. I mean, it was like the apocalypse on Monday because the park went on fire and it was raining ash outside and there was smoke coming into my flat. <laughs> it was about 40 degrees, felt like the end of the world. So, you know, everyone do your recycling. And uh, yeah, yeah. they said they saw a Scottish guy on the, in the forest before it burned out. This this campaign of uh, <laughs> of of lies and slanders just never going to end, is it? Never. No. You're going to get me in real trouble one day. I'm going to end up in Italian jail. <laughs> in the they're, they're very comfy, so don't worry. <laughs> no, I, I was thinking. I think that's it, right? We talk about pretty much everything. I mean, Lazio did so many things this uh, this in the last two weeks that there's plenty of things to talk about. Ah, we have to mention probably the Minikoi Savic Arsenal story because I've been contacted mm. by a lot of Arsenal podcasts. So last week, um, or beginning of this week, rumors were that Arsenal made a bid for for Minikoi Savic, something like 15 million euros, which is we know is not enough. I'm not convinced. Milinkovic Savic wants to go to Arsenal. No offense to all Arsenal fans, because if Milinkovic leaves, he's going to go to a team fighting for the Champions League. Arsenal is in Europe League, so I don't think that's the right team. But I don't know. Some of transfer close in nearly two months, so there's a lot of time. But I don't think Arsenal will be the team where Milinkovic ends. I'd be disappointed, to be honest, if it was. Um... You know, realistically, Arsenal sit in about the same place in the Premier League that Lazio sit. I mean, literally last season, in case of finishing fifth, I think Lazio have every good as as uh, a chance as to get into the Champions League in Serie A as Arsenal do in the Premier League. Obviously, the money is very different, but um, yeah, I mean, at the same time. I think we're all on the same page where we feel that if Milinkovic Savic is going to go, we want him to go to the Premier League so that we get as much of that sweet Premier League cash as possible. Um, but also, I think everyone has an attachment to Sergei now. Um, talking about popular players, I don't think there's many other than Chiro who can kind of compete with Sergei for the love of the fans. And I think everyone wants him to do well where he is next. And I'm sure he would do well at uh, Arsenal, but part of me kind of wants, wants a bit more for him. Um, yeah, I, I think Chelsea can be a better option. You know, they're in the Champions yeah. League, they have the money. But Manchester United has been linked with uh, Sergei at the beginning of the summer window. Again, they're in Europe League. They probably have the money to afford yeah. it. But please don't go there. <laughs> no, I mean, CD would have been an option, but they already spent a lot, so I don't think they have the money enough. So we, we have to see because rumors are that his agent has been traveling all around Europe to, to get the right offer. But I think he wants a Champions League team. So it, it's going to be complicated. I would say that. It's not impossible. Obviously, we hope that he stays. But I think it's going to be complicated this summer. Which leads us to the other problem. He has another year of contract. This will mean that next summer, probably Lazio will have to accept a lower offer if they don't renew the contract, right? Yeah, also true. Um, unless, you know, miraculously he ends up signing a new one, but I find that very unlikely. So, yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Because there was almost an acceptance at the end of the season that this was probably it. And the moment had probably come uh, in a way that there hasn't been quite in previous years. So it's just so complicated now in the transfer market, the way it is, the, the money that's required to sign players of that caliber 
um, is a lot and the amount of money that clubs have isn't as much generally now after especially after covid and a lot of the struggles that teams have had so you can really count the number of teams capable of signing sergey um on your hands to be honest so yeah we'll see we'll see what happens yep it's it's a long summer let's hope we sign a couple of goalkeepers as soon as possible and then we see what happened with uh, with the sergey or luis alberto again I, I would prefer to sell luis alberto than sergey but at the moment, it doesn't look like any of those two will, will leave Lazio. Uh, so we're going to see. But we're going to be back as soon as possible when Alisson finish holidays again. So again. And, maybe, and maybe Romagnoli will be back, will be with us. Who knows? Yeah, I'll see if I can get some transfer business done down in Puglia. Okay. Um, pull some strings. Thank you very much, Alistair, for joining me. Thanks, everybody, for listening to the podcast. Remember, you can rate us and subscribe on iTunes, Spreaker, Spotify, Amazon. Uh, we are on YouTube. We are on Twitch. So rate us and follow us on wherever you listen to podcasts. And rate us on Spotify because it takes two seconds. And this helps us massively to reach more people. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Forza Lazio. <laughs>